Hi, my name is Sasha, and my topic is game theory. Uh, I studied um, economics many years ago, and uh, this is the only thing I can remember from that time. And uh, so we start with a strange question, is Indiana Jones stupid? <laughs> okay, uh, you may know this scene, uh, for those who don't know, uh, it's about Indiana Jones' father is dying on the ground. And uh, Indy has to choose the right cup, which gives you eternal life if you drink it. If you choose the wrong cup and drink it, you will die immediately. And so in the movie, he chooses the cup, and he says, there's only one way to find out. He tries it first, then of course it's the right cup, because it's Hollywood, and then he gives it to his father, who is alive. Well, in this case, uh, it works. But what if uh, the cup was false? Uh, so he has two choices, actually, to give the cup first to his father, or to drink it first himself. So what happens if the father drinks uh, the poisoned cup first? He will die, unfortunately. But Indy will stay alive in this case, right? And what if it's Indy, who drinks first the poison cup, like in the movie, he will die. And his father will die, because he's starving. So actually, in, uh, Mr. Jones Jr. has chosen the wrong strategy. The only way to find out is to give the cup to his father, because, uh, <laughs> because Indy would stay alive in this case. And uh, this is the so-called uh, dominant strategy. I will ref return later to it. So you see, Hollywood doesn't care much about logic. And uh, this example was actually from decision theory, which is related to game theory. And what is game theory now? Well, as you can imagine, game theory is not uh, how to win car races on PlayStation or something. It's about another game we play every day. It's about the most realistic game ever, and it's called Life. <laughs> you can play this game using Windows, like this guy. Okay, jokes aside, so game theory, uh, is a mathematical approach for predicting people's behavior depending on decisions of other people. So a game is being played whenever people have anything to do with each other. And there's always some kind of conflict and cooperation in these situations. For example, Romeo and Juliet have played a teenage mating game which didn't work out too well. Um, USA and USSR have played um, dangerous game during the Cold War with nuclear weapons. A supermarket manager deciding the price for his pizza is playing a game with all the other storekeepers around him. So all these are games. Unfortunately, game theory can't solve all of the world's problems because it's only about what happens when people interact in a rational manner. That's why we can't predict the behavior of love-sick teenagers like Romeo and Juliet. And now, I would say, let the games begin, and who wants to play a game with me? Okay, I have seen this guy and the guy with the white shirt. Can you please come to the stage? <laughs> and I have some good news for you guys. We will play for money. <laughs> and you can win this one. Please, go here. <laughs> uh, what's your name? Hui. Hui. Please write your name on the paper. And what's your name? Narek. Please write it on your paper. And uh, I want everybody to be silent during the game. <laughs> Keep the pen. Place yourself back to back here. Right, very good. All right. And now the rules. Imagine you are directors of two scientific institutes. Yeah? And you are in great financial troubles. You need financial support. Otherwise, you have, to, you have to close your institute, fire all your employees to stop your research, and you won't win the Nobel Prize. Um, and in this difficult time, there comes the Messiah, and that's me. <laughs> I am a very rich investor who has a lot of money, and I want to invest in science. And it doesn't matter 
in which in your institute or in yours or in both. And now I come to you first, and I have a following suggestion. I can give you one euro now, or I can give two euros to the other institute down the street. Now I come to you, and I have the same suggestion. I can give you one euro, or I can give two euros to the other institute over there. So the rules are common knowledge. You both know the rules, and you both know that the other knows the rules. And please write now on your paper one euro if you want to keep the money, or two euros if you want me to give the money to the other. <laughs> okay, can I get? Thanks. You get it? Thanks a lot. I will first do the analysis and then uh, reveal your answers. Please take your seat and uh, big applause for you guys. You will get your money. So for you guys, I will show something on here on the flip chart. If you don't see it, you uh, need to um, stand up, please. So uh, one thing I forgot. Here, I have my prediction for this game. I have my own prediction. I know in advance what the outcome will be. We will uh, do the analysis and then look if I am right. I put it here. All right. So we can express this game in a matrix like this. Right? So we have two players, player number one and player number two. And they have different choices. We call them strategies. So the first strategy is uh, to keep the money. Let's call this an egoistic strategy. <laughs> and the second Strategy is to give the money to the other, so this is the cooperative strategy, like they want to cooperate. Cooperative. So now we need the outputs. What will uh, happen? So if both play egoistically, if both decide to keep the money, they will get one euro each, right? If both decide to give the money to the other institute, they will get two euros each. And if player number one, for example, decides to keep the money, so he will play egoistical strategy, and the other guy decides to give his money, so player number one will get three, and the other, nothing. And the same here, the other way around. Right? So, now we have expressed our game in a, a matrix form, and now we need to make um, a prediction. How will they behave? Uh, and the most common way to do so is to... Um, find an equilibrium, because an equilibrium is a stable situation where nobody wants to change his position. In game theory, we call this a Nash equilibrium, because of this guy on the left, who was a mathematician and contributed a lot to game theory. You may know him by the movie uh, Beautiful Mind, actually. So and where is our Nash equilibrium here? Well, let's see from the perspective of player one, from the red perspective. He is thinking, OK, what if player number two wants to keep his money? What should I do? What is better for me? Well, it's obvious. I should also keep my money. I should play egoistical because here I will get nothing. And what if player number two is giving his money to me? Well, in this case, it's again better for me to keep my money because three is <laughs> bigger than two. So, and we see that the egoistical strategy is the dominant strategy. Remember Indiana Jones. And... Uh, Player number two has the same situation. His egoistical strategy is also the dominant one. And in the end, they meet here, both get one euro, and this is our Nash equilibrium. Great. But something's bad here, isn't it? Look at this field. They both could have earned more if they cooperated together. Instead, they, instead of they end up here with one euro each. Why does it happen? Because from a rational point of view, the egoistical strategy gives you always a bigger output. Doesn't matter what the other player does. Uh, this field here is not an equilibrium. Imagine for a moment they both will cooperate. They are here. So what will player, the red player think? He was thinking, hmm, what if I change my mind? What will happen if I change from here to egoistic one? Well, then I will get three euro. Of course I should do so. Please notice, we are talking here right now, this is a model, we're talking about rational agents, rational robots, who just thinking three is bigger than two, then I will choose this. So we're not talking about friendships or relationships or ethics. 
So, and player number two will think the same. He also wants to change here, and in, in the end, they end up here with one euro each. And this is a tragedy. This is a dilemma. The face of the evil on Earth, if you want. Uh, because if they cooperated, they could have... The whole society, the whole group, would get two plus two is four, and instead they get only two. One plus one is two. And um, this is the most famous game in game theory. It's called the Prisoner's Dilemma. So we have seen the dilemma. Why well, it's called Prisoner's Dilemma? Well, uh, because in its classical form, there's a story about two criminals committed a bank robbery and being caught by the police and put in separate rooms. So when they have two strategies, to keep silent, don't speak, or to confess, so to betray the other. If they both keep silent, they will uh, get one year in prison just because they are criminals. If they both confess, they will get five years in prison each. And if the red guy confesses, or if he betrays, and the brown guy still keeps silent, the red player will come free, and the brown guy will spend 10 years in prison as a penalty for holding out. So, and the same the other way around. And again, they both, both should cooperate, spending only one year in prison, but it doesn't work. Because the red player uh, uh, criminal is thinking, what? what if the brown guy confesses, what should I do? Well, I should also confess five years is better than 10 years in prison. And if uh, the other guy keeps silent, well, in that case, I definitely should confess because I will go free. And the brown guy has the same argumentation at the end, again, Confessing is the dominant strategy, and they will both spend five years in prison instead of one year. And this uh, prisoner's dilemma shows in an elegant way that if each individual pursues his own self-interest, the outcome for each and for the group is worse than if they had cooperated. That was the theory. And now let's look on a real-life example. I prepared one. It's about... Uh, steroid use in sports, so there are two choices, two strategies, to take doping or don't take doping, so in the best option for everybody uh, is not take doping because it's fair play and good for your health, good for your body. Uh, if anyone does take doping, he will have an advantage compared to the others. But if everybody takes doping, this advantage disappears, but the disadvantages stay, like your ruined body and your ruined health. Uh, you can observe, actually, this example very good in cycling sport, which is unfo <coughs> unfortunately very, very spoiled. Um, yes. <laughs> I forgot. Uh, okay. Uh, and now you, uh, now you ask the question, do people always behave like the theory predicts? Do people always cheat? And here I can give you a clear-cut answer. It depends. <laughs> this is the favorite answer of economists to <laughs> all questions. Well, uh, we are social human beings, and we often think how the group might decide. We're looking from the perspective of the group and try to find an optimistic decision. If you play this game several times, if you repeat it, we can build relationships. <laughs> and cooperation gives both a bigger output. Imagine an eBay trader who receives the payment but doesn't deliver the goods. He will not survive in the market. So in the long run perspective, it is wise to cooperate. Well, and now the showdown. <laughs> How did our audience behave? Who will get the money? Who will be in the chips? And I'm very happy that this, uh, about this result. They behaved like real game theorists. Everybody wants to keep the money. So guys, <laughs> thanks a lot. <laughs> I thank you very much because during the rehearsals, I lost a lot of money already. <laughs> and this is the f for the first time. Uh, well, and now let's look if uh, uh, on my um, prediction. So we know the model predicts this outcome and this is what happened, but also in reality, people don't behave always like this, but of course, since I'm a good game theorist, I predicted the right result. <laughs> so, thank you very much for listening.
if you recognize in your life a situation like prisoner's dilemma, try to avoid this trap and try to find a cooperation to increase the wealth, uh, welfare of the group. Thanks a lot. Good night. Thank you.